it all goes back to the whole observer, mm-hmm. right? So I could have just as easily resisted my stepfather. Yeah. I could have just as easily said, I'm not following that path. Now, I don't know why I did what I did, mm-hmm. but I responded to it. Right. Right. So you'll see people that will grow up in a household and, you know, they're, they're a year apart. They literally, literally had identical childhoods mm-hmm. and yet they're two different directions. Yeah. That's, we don't know why, but I would assess that men are shaped and anyone is shaped by the stories they tell, mm-hmm. the moods and emotions they live in and in the body. Welcome into the Men are Forged podcast. I'm your host, Cartwright Morris. At Men are Forged, we are about the forging of men towards their life purpose. Life purpose is so powerful today because of the futility, the purposelessness that is found in men, especially men in their 20s and 30s. So I, I'm a certified coach. I lead groups as well as I mentor men who are dealing with futility in their life and give them a purpose to their next stage to become the man that they are called to be. So if this is you, go to mentorforge.com and subscribe. Welcome into today's episode. Uh, Excited to have you all. This was a clip you just heard from my most recent episode, episode 93, with Croft Edwards. Uh, really enjoy the conversation with Croft just because we hit on a variety of topics. Uh, but his coaching style is so unique. I'm a big fan of just interesting ways to connect with people, to help them unpack their story, who they are, why they do what they do. That's why I think Croft was so interesting. Um, but at that cl- uh, clip I just shared, is interesting because um, we are forged by the stories we tell and the moods and emotions. Um, It's interesting just the sequence of that. Um, Our observer, you know, his uh, unique way, it's kind of used a lot of language that um, most of us are kind of not, and if you didn't hear the full podcast or even read his book, um, the unique style unique understanding of how to observe your life in a way that helps you reflect. And so that's um, hopefully what I'll try to unpack today in understanding is when we observe our life, we can really then articulate the stories we tell. And another way to use it, as I've used the term, our, our narratives, our personal narratives we have in our brain that tend to dictate our life. Uh, I'm a firm believer, if y'all have probably heard, is building healthy mindsets. But I think even more to really build that is we got to start by owning our story. And we own our story by understanding it, by observing, like Croft said, observing what's happened in our life, understanding the little things that have, um, you know, helped us or harmed us, kept us from... Um, truly fully living that has kind of imprisoned us, those stories. Um, one of the stories that I've told myself, right, that I'm, you know, uh, was not articulate, wasn't smart, didn't have the uh, skills or the intelligence to really even have a podcast, let alone stand in front of an audience and articulate something. And you repeat that story and it's reinforced, yeah, definitely by people around you, but you start really believing that, and then you, and unfortunately, then you've got to find some level of success, hold on to that, celebrate that. Why encouragement and positive thinking, right, can be so powerful because it starts retelling that narrative, retelling that story in our life, and we get to then shape things in a healthier way and have more positive and influential actions. Um on others as well as ourself. So uh, I think today, yeah, just find that. What is that narrative you're telling yourself? What is that story you're telling that um, tends to repeat history? It's like a that history that's being repeated in your life, right? That's where I'm at. Um, you know, it's the old adage, those who are unwilling to study history are doomed to repeat it. 
I think that we, we sometimes, you know, um, apply that in a macro historical level, which is very true. But also, we see that on a very personal, individual level in our own life. If we don't, if we're not willing to, you know, I think if y'all have listened to, you know, multiple episodes, there is a common theme about pain of the unwillingness to look at pain, the avoidance of pain. We're not willing to look at the pain, the things that have caused us pain in our life then there's no way we can redeem them or overcome them. We tend to just reproduce them in other ways, and it brings it back in our life. And so by really understanding your pain, what you've been through, um, and kind of the big three I like to articulate is, especially for men, is failure, trauma, and complexity. You know, the failures... Men, we, we, the regrets that we have from our failures that we didn't choose a certain job or didn't get a certain job or a failed relationship or we didn't get the girl or um, we, you know, didn't start on in foot, you know, in high school on a team or something, you know, these little things they add up and they start telling a story to us. Uh, trauma, which is huge. I mean, I, I I'm a big component of counseling, seeking counseling, seeking. Um, that face to face, um, here, you know, uh, to give a little bit of plug for myself as well as just, um, Calvert and Associates where I work is, um, finding someone, I think as men, we are good at living our life shoulder to shoulder, but we need it better at face to face, put that discipline in our life. It may not be a counselor, but a mentor, somebody to just see into our life and voice these really bad, these hurts, these Big T traumas or even the little T traumas. Um, and then last is the complexity. That life's hard. People are complex. Uh, things happen that we can't control. Um, and But our willingness to embrace that and to understand that, that, you know, we're dealing when we, we are human as well as we deal with humans. And in that ple- complexity, we can kind of lean into it versus constantly trying to bo- avoid it and put up a mask or be angry because it's not perfect. And if we just keep moving forward despite the complexity of our life, then we find out some really good things that there is always order coming out of chaos. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, today, if you can just um, think of the stories you're telling, what are the things, the narratives that are in your head that are harming you? And maybe with some of the positive ones, the good ones that are bringing fruit, uh, whether in your relationships or your business or um, just in your life on a daily basis, um, even with your kids, right? We, you know, uh, I'm, I, th- I know all of us want to be better uh, parents than our own parents, whether we had good upbringings or not, right? We want to love our kids well so that they feel a sense of freedom of being who they are, you know, more than we felt. And, you know, um, so I, I think just in a very honoring way, being honest about what happened to you as an adult, what you didn't get, because that's the, that's the definition of little T trauma, right? Type B trauma is things you didn't get, right? A lack of affection, um, attention, recognition, encouragement um, from a parental figure that you craved, you know, Big T trauma is the things that happened to you, right, versus what was withheld. And I think we've all experienced that, everyone, to to because we right we were raised by imperfect people as much as they do love us and still love us and care for us. I think you always got to be willing to reflect that in our life. And so, um, therefore, we be, do become better parents than our parents were. And I think our parents would probably agree with that statement, that they want us to do better than they did. Um, cause they love our grandkid, your, their grandkids, right. As well as they love us and want to see us thrive. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Just think of the stories you tell the narratives that are in your head. Um, and I think that comes from really understanding your pain, really knowing what you've been through, uh, really looking at it and find the redemptive arc in that story 
uh, and yeah, and really have compassion for yourself in those moments. Um, you'll, you'll become more human and therefore become more relatable, more authentic, more yourself and, and reproduce really good things in life that people connect with and that people really want to be around. So, all right. Um, yeah, if you haven't on yet, please, please go to whatever, uh, platform you listen to and subscribe. It's a huge help to me. And, uh, yeah, go check out mentorforge.com. I got some new things coming. Really excited about some of the group things as well as the, you know, I'm doing a, a monthly flat fee for mentoring calls. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of my clients, it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to do a coaching session on a regular basis. So instead, yeah, I'm providing, um, uh, mentoring calls on zoom or even over the phone, um, on a monthly basis, you just sign up for one month at a time and, uh, yeah, you get access to me, you know, at least four times a month and, uh, on 20, 30 minute calls and we can talk through an issue, a uh, solution or just something place you need to just brain dump. So, uh, go check that out at mentor, uh, at mentorforge.com backslash mentoring. Thank y'all for listening and I'll see y'all next time.